for Grow Falcons. I am back with the book Bob by Wendy Moss and Rebecca Stett. And today's chapter is chapter four and it is told from Bob's point of view. It has a definition for zombie. It is a noun, a dead body brought back to life. A dead body? We both jump away from the book. Livy trips on the rug and we fall into a heap. I am not dead, I insist, my face pushed straight into the rug. I unscramble my legs and pick up the dictionary. It is not heavy for me. I flip to the D pages, which I already went through during my first year in the closet after I taught myself how to read. I read aloud, dead, adjective, lacking power to move, feel, or respond, incapable of being stirred emotionally. Well, you are definitely moving, she observes, even your foot. I stand up, shimmy, and turn in a circle to prove her right. She reaches out and pinches that sensitive spot under my elbow. Ouch! You feel and respond, she says. I rub my arm. I am very sensitive, I say, raising my chin. I have always been like that. Always, she asks, because I thought you didn't know anything about yourself. I shake my head. I know I feel sad when Gran worries into the phone about missing the rain. I know I like salty snacks and avocados on toast and warm tea because you gave me that for breakfast last time. Only you called it brekkie, which is what Gran calls it. And we both agreed we liked the sound of it. I also like pirates and the color orange and I know my name. But that does not tell me where I came from or what I am. Can you please tell me your name, she begs. Is it Bertram? I shake my head. Do I look like a Bertram? Not really, she admits. Throckmorton. Lachlan? I shake my head. Lachlan? She shrugs. I remember that's a common name for boys here in Australia. That you remember? Can't you just tell me? First, you have to promise not to laugh. She makes an X over her heart. So I tell her. It's Bob. Her lips quiver at the corners, but she keeps her word and does not laugh. I know it's not a very exciting name for a zombie, but it's all I've got. You're not a zombie, though. You could be almost anything. I brighten. She's right. I think about the possibilities. I know I'm not human. Maybe I'm superhuman. <gasps> Livy, I could be the Hulk or Green Lantern. I just don't read the dictionary. Sometimes I read the superhero comic books on the top shelf that I had to have to stand on the dictionary to reach. I never thought I might be one of them before. Livy looks me up and down. The color's right, but the Hulk needs to be angry before he turns green. Are you, are you angry? Well, I'm still more than a little ticked off about everything, but not angry. I shake my head. Doesn't the Green Lantern always wear a special ring? I look down at my bare hands and sigh. I guess I'm not the Green Lantern. Don't feel too bad, Libby says. Whatever you are, you're still pretty cool. So here's a picture of Libby and Bob talking. I haven't gotten a compliment in a long time. Five years to be exact. It feels nice. I want to tell her there are pr plenty of other superheroes I could be, even though they're not green. But she is tapping the cover of the dictionary now. I wonder if there's a book where we can look up what you are instead of what you're not. We both glance over at the bookshelf. Livy moves her hand along the edges of the books like she's looking for one in particular, but then shakes her head. If there is, we don't have it. But we'll figure it out. A look crosses her face. A familiar look. She is concentrating. I like that look. All right, she says, facing me. First things first. I need you to tell me everything that happened when I was here the last time. I open my mouth, but she holds up her hand. Not right now. My mother's going to come up any minute to check on me. Can you hide again? If she sees you, she'll totally freak out. Maybe I'm like the invisible visible girl from the Fantastic Four, I say, stalling. I really don't want to go back in that closet. Maybe I can turn invisible even though I'm not a girl. Can you? She asks, tapping her foot. 
I squeeze my eyes shut and practice being not seen. I open one eye. Well, can you see me? Yes, Bob. I can see you. She said my name. Bob. It makes me feel, well, seen and heard like I'm a person or whatever I am. I'm glad I'm not invisible after all. I hear her mother approaching the door. Uh-oh. With my super hearing, I should have known she was coming. I was too busy basking in the glow of hearing my name. The great and powerful Bob, the Bobster. His Bobness. Luckily, her mom stops for a second outside the door to knock. She is a very polite mom. Not that I know many moms, or any moms. I take the opportunity to fling myself back into the closet. What choice do I have? Livy sticks out her foot and pushes the closet door closed just as the bedroom door opens. My heart is beating really fast. Hey, that's more proof that I'm not dead. Dead things don't have heartbeats. Are you up for a walk, Olivia? Her mother asks. Let's go get some fresh air. Livy hesitates, but then extra loud says, Okay, let's go for a walk. She doesn't have to talk loud for my benefit. I have excellent hearing when I pay attention. I've learned most of what I know about the outside world from listening to Grand Nicholas's television through the closet wall. Like now, I hear their feet moving across the carpet toward the door. Then one set stops. What's this? Her mother asks. That, Libby says, oh, just some feathers I found in the closet. An old art project I must have started last time I was here. I suddenly realize my elbow feels bare and breezy. I reach around and sure enough, some of the feathers are missing from my chicken outfit. I feel wrong without them. Like, I'm not me. I hold my breath. I hope her mother doesn't take them. Oh, I'm glad you're remembering some things from last time, she tells Livy. It's always nice to return somewhere where you've already made happy memories. Silence. Is she doing something with the feathers? What is she doing? I am itching to peek out, but there is no keyhole in the door because who would lock a closet? You can just leave those feathers on the bed, Libby finally says. Oh, of course, her mother says. We can see the animals and I'll show you the well I built with my dad when I was your age. You weren't allowed to go near it last time because you were too small. Her voice fades as they go down the stairs. The last thing I hear is Libby saying, I don't remember having to stay away from a well. But I do. I remember her making a wide circle around that well every time she went out to the backyard. She kept me far away from it, too. She was good at looking out for me. When I hear the kitchen door, kitchen's back door slam shut downstairs, I fling open the closet door and grab my feathers off the bed. I am glad that my foot is not detached, after all, because <laughs> that would make it hard to run. I hold the feathers to my arm. I will have to ask Livy to bring me glue or sticky tape when she returns. Feeling like myself again, I snuggle down into my sleep corner for a nap. Every few months, I like to sleep for an hour or two. It relaxes me when I'm stressed. When I wake up, I can tell through the sliver of space in the doorframe that it is dark. I sit upright. That was a long nap. Livy didn't return in all this time. Has she left me again? I throw open the door. Under the bedsheet is the unmistakable outline of my old friend. Unless, oh, unless she stuffed pillows in there to make it look like her. She told me she did that once at home and then snuck downstairs for an ice pop. I'd like to try an ice pop someday. I poke one small green finger at the lump in her bed. <sniffs> snore. Phew. Pillows don't snore, so that's a good sign. I turn back to the closet and nearly trip over the tray of baked beans, a bag of potato chips, and an orange fizzy drink that is sitting right there. Three new foods to try! Hooray! The note taped to the side of the bag of chips says, Dear Bob, also known as the Not Zombie, I didn't want to wake you, plus I'm all jet-legged and need to sleep. Strange word, jet-legged, jet -legged, not sleep, which isn't that strange a word at all. Anyway, I'm sorry again for the wait and for the forgetting. We will figure out what you are, I promised. Your friend, Olivia, also known as Livy. I beam. I knew old Livy was still in there somewhere, even though new Livy might have forgotten her. I carefully peel the note off the chips and use the tape to stick the feathers back on. Then I settle down to my feast, wishing Livy was awake to share it with me. 
Humans are strange, sleeping half their lives away like that. Not in my life has it been so exciting these past... Not that my life has been so exciting these past five years. The beans are excellent. All right, that's the end of chapter four. And um, we will continue later with chapter five.